and I am presenting you a little bit of a treat here. This is a game from the IC Cup ladder, and it's going to be between Cute 2 and Draw, also known as Ellen Page on the, um, on the name you can see on the screen here. Now this is just a special presentation of what games you will be seeing in our great Icy Cup Ladder main event happening December 7th and December 14th. So get really excited about that. Um, even though I will be solo casting this, we will be having two more casters. Draw will be one of the featured casters and then Maurice Payne will also be uh, one of the casters too. So if you guys are familiar with them, get really excited. Now let me give a shout out to our sponsors before I go right into this game here. It will be the Swedish Brood War Initiative in Glens.eu Global Insurance Solutions Insurance Brokers. So thank you guys for donating a lot of money and anybody else who added donations on their own. I know I threw, it, threw in $10 myself. It's about all I could afford at the time. But every contribution helps to help these foreign players make some money. So now let's get into the game here. And um, it's been quite a while since I've actually casted from a replay itself. Uh, so this will just be a good practice for Saturday. Because usually I'm just doing VODs. Um, and why is that? Because all the BC games are VODs, obviously. So um, let me reconfigure my microphone here. And, you know, the probes are just mining. It's not going to be anything huge if you guys miss a, a pat certain patch of minerals from, um, from being mined. And so down at the bottom left here, we do have Q2, and at the top right, it is a draw. So I am very excited to see what the build orders are going to be for these for both of these players here. You can see, obviously, that uh, the Overlord is scouting across the map to the top right. It will be able to detect draw pretty quickly here. Meanwhile, draw is looking to try and fill this wide gap here. There's a fairly large choke point coming into the main out to where the natural area expands. And this makes it a lot more difficult for a Protoss player to go for that forge expand. So what you want to try and do is configure your forge and your gateway here to try and prevent the uh, Zerg units from getting inside of the main base. Um, instead of trying to defend on this ramp here where it's a much more difficult position and links are more likely to get through so everything pretty standard so far for both players we're seeing that uh, uh, actually a particularly fast gas is going to be coming up for the Zerg player which means that we are going to have nine pull speed on the way and hopefully draw is well prepared for this with the way that he is set up he might have Oh, there's going to be a huge opening. I think Draw putting his forge in this position instead of closer um, towards the ledge here might cause some issue. But we are going to just have to keep an eye on that. Obviously, the links are going to be uh, uh, starting on the way very shortly here with the extra larva that's available. And yes, we do have one, two, three eggs filled with larvas now. Or uh, filled with zerglings, and they will um, be just pounding their way across the map as soon as possible. You know, I'll draw dropping down a cannon. He realizes that he is going to need a couple cannons here, putting one in front of this gas. I'm actually curious because I'm not familiar if this uh, cannon will um, will kind of hinder the mining of the the uh, assimilator later in the game. But we will find out when time comes. And uh, kind of smart putting a pylon in here in case he does need to build a, a cannon inside of his mineral line. Um, or just kind of right outside of his nexus. It's going to give him the availability to do that. And look at that. The Zerglings are being a little bit indecisive here. Not running straight across. I wonder if uh, he scouted something interesting here. No. So I think that I think that we're going to realize that these Zerglings... Oh, okay. So what he wants to do with the Zerglings is take out that pro, uh, the pylon. That was blocking the natural base. And that's going to be a little bit of a slowdown here. Not bad for draw. He's uh, so far... Um, hasn't had to engage against these Zerglings and deal with Q2 uh, Q uh, aggression, even though he did go for that 9 pull speed. Speed is just finished now, though, and so he is going to be able to pick off any of these scouting probes. That's going to be a huge deal. That draw is going to have to just have some Gosu probe micro to try and keep the uh, observing alive, but no. It looks like that is going to be the end here. Still smartly putting this uh, Overlord here. As a Zerg player, you really don't have to be afraid of Dragoons coming out. 
very quickly. It's once Corsairs come that you know that you're probably going to lose that Scouting Overlord. So just kind of either prepare for that or move them away at a proper time. An, an additional Overlord trying to do uh, some good scouting. Um, make sure there's nothing hidden on the map. And that draw won't be going for a tricky build. So a lot of circlings here though. And this is where it's going to come down to. Are these cannons going to be enough? It looks like he's just going to make his way through. And now he's going to be inside. Draw's going to have to deal with a lot of pressure from these circlings. And they look like they can uh, make their way inside. And this is exactly what I said. If you put the pylon here, he can put the cannon inside of his uh, mineral area and use it for defense. But he's got to defend this pylon. This pylon is a crucial thing in surviving throughout this game. The Zerglings, though, continuing to peck at it. And it looks like the probe, uh, the pylon, will end up going down, building an additional one inside of his main base. Try not to manor pilot himself at the same time, and it looks like this cannon's gonna get so low. And he's actually using some decent probe micro to try and pick off the zerglings while they're focusing down buildings. But this is gonna be really hurtful for draw. He's gonna be losing the assimilator. Finally, a zealot is coming out, and if he can be careful with that zealot, he might be able to pick off these uh, zerglings one by one. Meanwhile, we are seeing that a third hatchery is coming down for the Zerg player behind this. The Nexus is up for draw, so he's not in a terrible position here. His economy hasn't been completely wrecked. The probes aren't being able to, to mine inside of the main base. And look at that. Oh, just getting that Zealot barely out away from the Zerglings. And he is continuing to survive here. Inside of the natural base, we do see that uh, a gateway, just a single gateway is up right now. But um, no assimilators. So it will be very delayed if he does try to go for that Corsair tech, which is really important to do the scouting as a Protoss player. Draw, he, he's not behind economically, but he's uh, behind technologically speaking. You know, he really needs to be further into that tier two um, type units and working on that tech. So the Zealots here are gonna continue to deal with these uh, baiting Zerglings. And it seems like his main base is up and running pretty good here. So, um, healthy economy, like I said. Meanwhile, we're looking at the gas situation here. Only one gas, so this could be a heavy Hydra build. Um, necessarily, if you want to go for that um, heavy Muta aggression, you want to take that second assimilator very quickly. But because he doesn't have that, he could be going for some sort of 5-6 hatch Hydra uh, bus following this up which is not a bad move. Dude, like I said earlier, it, it takes a little bit longer for you to get to this location here and come down the ramp with the Hydras. Um, and you can try and bust through this area here like uh, we saw earlier with the Zerglings, but that's not, um, it's not what he's gonna do. He's probably gonna try and wrap his Hydras around the map here, if you look at the mini map where my cursor is, and then just bring him down that wide ramp. So the plus one attack is the first thing that Draw decided to go for. Okay, well he does have the Corsairs, but plus one attack immediately after, realizing that he is going to do that. A couple idle pros here, um, but uh, that's not a huge issue. Draw seems to be uh, pretty on top of what he needs to do to make sure he can survive this Hydra attack once it does happen. So there's second extractor now, which makes me want to count how many um, hatcheries we actually have. So we're up to one, two, three hatcheries and a late lair actually um I'm, I'm surprised that the the lair is uh or is it mutating into a hive tech right now it's got lair's got to be done um i'd be really surprised if it wasn't so two hatcheries at the natural two hatcheries in the main and then one hatchery or uh, two hatcheries at the third and then one hatchery in the main Ugh, it is uh 12 a.m now guys and um that's no excuse for for calling things wrong. Now we do have a couple of Zerglings just kind of sitting on the map here. Uh, and he's going to know if any Zealots try to move out. Meanwhile, we do have a single Zergling that happened to make it through. Or either he was alive just for that duration of the whole period there. And getting a lot of scouting off. The Corsair count is low. Obviously he only has uh, one right now on the map. Moving out, a second one on the way. But the lack of Hydras right now is um is gonna allow that, allow that corsair to get in a poke in a little bit more but he saw that there was quite a bit of eggs here and you knew that had to re the uh hydras were just about to pop out of those eggs so wisely pulling back back, back that corsair and now we are seeing the evolution chamber here so the lair is done i can't believe that was a really late lair um you know i've never noticed whether um when you're morphing um from a hatchery to a lair or a lair to a hive what name was actually above the evolving bar um, above that progress bar so that's pretty interesting 
and um, I'm gonna have to keep track of that in the future. So the um, Hydras are uh, preparing themselves to try and maybe do a miniature bust up top, but that's not nearly enough units here. It's enough to fake a Hydra bust. And that's what I'm thinking he'll want to do, is maybe just apply some pressure up here, scare Draw back into his main base, but that's a lot of Zealots moving out. Draw continuing to macro up those uh, Tier 1 Zealots, and now they are on the move. They don't have their speed, though. That is going to be one thing that is going is um, noticeable about Draw being so delayed on his gas, is that speed is so late right now. And what you want to do is kind of time speed out at this point, so when you finally get close, about halfway across the map, speed is done. Um, you can see that it is being researched currently, nothing researched inside the Temple Archives, a good amount of Corsairs, and Draw's just going to continue to try and pump those Corsairs because he knows he really needs to have some, um, some of those air units out there on the map. And a few more cannons, which is questionable, I think. Okay, so he did cancel them. That's exactly what I was thinking too, is that he realized that he did not need these additional cannons and that that was a, more of a fake Hydra bus that he was running into. And now that he seal, sees that he's a little bit more secure here, the speed is done. And instead of sending him out earlier, he's going to send the Zealots out now where he can keep him a little bit safer and micro a little bit better. One Dark Templar there, it's going to do enough to defend right now since there are no Overlords across the map. And so we're going to have to watch these guys. They are on, on speed right now. This is like permanent stim for Zealots, if you guys don't know. Except for it does not increase their attack speed which would be insane if it did. So that's a lot of Hydras though, and they might be able to catch these salts off guard, and Draw's realizing he's gonna have to pull back. He can't engage these anymore. So a follow-up to that fake Hydra Bust is an actual Hydra Bust, and the irony of that. So uh, Overlord speed being done too, so Draw's may be threatening at this time. I'm just curious to see if that's being researched. Um, it may even be done at this time. Uh, I think it would take a little bit longer here, but draw moving out with uh, the Zelts and the Dark Templar He's gonna lose these units unless he can run them around and keep them alive He's not finding too many openings, but fortunately Q2 is not doing the best job of uh, Of trying to spread the map and catch and block off all pathways for the Protoss player um, Draw eventually moving back though, and there's just a heavy force of Hydras available in case Q2 wants to start doing aggression and I think he ended up remaking that cannon that he canceled earlier right here, but still um, safely not making any more. Storm is almost done. You can see that it's a little bit past halfway. Meanwhile, he is he does have the robotics facility. He, he knows that he will need observers, but I'm curious after the observers if he's going to start going into some sort of drop play here. Working on a third base, though, at a mineral only, that's going to be really difficult. You know, it's nice to have a gas expansion, but... He's going to have to deal with that mineral only for now, which will allow him to pump out tons of gateway units at least. Um, seeing that zealots are not terribly expensive. Storms going off here though. Really nice storms. A bunch of hydras are going to be falling down here. And so nice, um, nice defensive play right here. Getting those storms off for draw. But there is an endless stream of hydras. It seems like... Um, Never mind, I take that back. I thought more were going to be coming across the map. It seems like this force, once it's done, is going to push Q2 back and draw doing a really good job of um, maintaining the stirred base. Sometimes you see a Protoss player just keel over and lose to a really quick force by having maybe nervous micro with their storms. But lurkers on the follow up here, which is what I was worried about when these lurkers were going to come into play. Fortunately, the draw, he was on top of it. He does have the observers on the way and look at that he did decide to go for a shuttle but did he go for that shuttle first over an observer because that could be very hurtful to him if he didn't go for the observer first and now we're seeing that this could be a huge issue for him q2 has a huge advantage now these lurkers they cannot be detected without the if they're outside of that cannon range He's going to have to rely on the cannons and a really nice storm defense to defend against these lurkers once the attack comes in. And it looks like they are going to push out. The range of these hydras are going to start sniping down the cannons so quickly here. Lurkers going on the burrow. And the shuttle, it's there, but it's got nothing inside of it. They're not very useful units at this time. And it looks like... Uh, the lurkers are going to be in a position to at least prevent the mining at this uh, third base inside of the mineral mine here. And a bunch more hydras moving in, but one single storm just eliminates them all. So Q2, it seems like his micro is not that great against these storms, but using nice positional play with the lurkers is going to allow him to still do a decent amount of damage. So that observer is out. And we got to be looking for it on the map now. It's got to be making its way across. 
Um, sometimes I'm absolutely blind to these observers. And here we do see it now. And easy peasy, it looks like the lurkers will eventually go down. And oh, that one zealot, not strong enough. And look at that, a single lurker morphing at the bottom right here. Um, not well, no, knowing what his particular uh, use is by sitting over here at the bottom right. But hey, if that's where it wants to morph, if that's where it wants to morph. Oh, uh, you, you would think that this force is pretty big here with the amount of um, um, color that's taken up by the Zerg on the minimap, but it's just a small group of Zerglings and Hydras. Meanwhile, a bunch of Lurkers going in a Congo line down to Draw's army here. And is he going to be able to engage that with just Lurkers? That's a terrible decision here. And he might end up losing a bunch of them just right out. Two Lurkers going down right away. And he needed to follow up with those uh, Zergling and Hydra forces at the same time. So Q2, he's going to have a nice engagement here. But... It seems like the storms are just keeping him at bay, not really doing a lot of damage, but threatening the Zerg forces as they try to engage. And it seems like Q2 wants to not engage any further here. Now, he does have four mining bases, and it seems like he might be looking to a fifth and just sitting there with a Hydra right now. Quite a bit of hatcheries are finished. And I guess maybe he's building sunken colonies just to be a little bit safe from harassment. But constant lurker morphing at this time. And I'm wondering why we haven't seen drops um, come into play inside of this game, especially since he got Overlord Speed so quickly. Obviously, Overlord Speed is not a bad upgrade to have just in general, but I thought he maybe rushed it a little bit because he was trying to do some more of a tricky play here. So, a nice uh, nice group of Dragoons and Corsairs. The, the Protoss Death Ball is getting really strong at this time because the energy on these uh, High Templars is getting pretty high too. Not too many storms have been burned right away, which is why you use those Zerglings to just try and bum rush the army. You'll see a player like Killer who's really intelligent and he just like pokes and prods the Zerglings a lot trying to pick up units and the Protoss player will respond with a lot of storms and all of a sudden once they're up you try and just uh, use your heavy tech units like the lurkers to come in and and um, start ripping apart the army because there's no more uh, psionic energy for the Protoss. And now we're seeing that uh, draw is making his way down to this 6 o'clock. Going to realize that there is no base there. So that's going to be really safe for him. And meanwhile, um, just a few units in the middle. It seems like the majority of his forces, he likes to just group his rally point. If you want to think about it, Q2's rally point seems to be just right in this general area here on the minimap. Sitting around that 9 uh, to 10 o'clock location. And, you know, that's not a bad idea. It's sitting on high ground, so if you're caught a little bit off guard, then there's just a shit ton of units here. So now we're seeing that the drops are going to come into play. That's why all these uh, overlords are out in the middle of the map. But draw, is he going to be able to catch it? This is going to be a huge, um, huge catch for him if he can. The uh, Corsairs are putting themselves in a good position here. The Dragoons moving up on top of the map too. But it looks like the overlords are going straight up to the top of the map. And they're just going to veer right, making a sort of an L uh, turn and heading straight towards the main base. Oh, they got caught off guard. Draws army moving inside. Q2 is going to have to run back. It seems like a lot of units are getting taken out. Picked off on the inside too. And some really good play here. And look at that. The plus one attack for draw on those Corsairs. Uh, meanwhile, if we look at the uh, upgrades here, we're looking at plus two terror pace, plus two attack. So they're going to do 24 damage as opposed to the natural 20 damage. Um, as lurkers and look at that this is why you run in not as many zerglings as that at a time to uh, to pressure your opponent even though it did waste storms he lost way too many zerglings that was like losing a hatchery worth of minerals right there um, so that kind of puts it into perspective when you lose that many zerglings even though you think they're rather inexpensive units and so now he's forced to try and burrow and defend here all his units getting caught off guard, and we have a Kakaroo just flying across the middle of the battlefield, just really risking it. Um, morphing Archons, Draw seems like he's in a really good position to pressure here. How is Q2 um, going to be able to uh, fight back here? And, you know, he's, he's running low on Lurkers, Storms are doing a really good job of pressuring inside. But we have the right side of the battlefield, it is blocking up Draw from retreating to the bottom uh, location of this ramp here. And if he tries to push, he might get in a little bit of a trouble. The observers are there, though. So with the Dragoon range, he should be able to pick pick off the Lurkers that are trying to prevent him from moving out. One of the Archons getting taken out, though. That was a little bit of a mistake. I think he should have microed that back and tried to keep the Archon alive. 
um, seeing as it's such an important unit here. Now, Zerglings are streaming in. Meanwhile, behind this, Draw did expand to the bottom right here. So he has four mining bases himself. He's actually working on an additional mining base at the 6 o'clock. And the Zerg player, Q2, is going to be expanding at the 12 o'clock. So this map is going to be entirely split right now. Both players are just going to have to go into this heavy macro game. We're almost 20 minutes down inside of the game. And we see that the Archon was doing the Archon dance. Um, up against, grinding up on those Dragoons. Trying to just get a little bit more funky. Um, than we would like to see. We would prefer he would kill units. But the Archon dance is, you know... A tribal tradition beyond the Protoss race. And look at this. The units are moving across inside of the middle of the map again for Q2. It looks like he's ready to transition into that aggression. His macro coming up really hard here. And he's about to surround a bunch of these Dragoons. And this is a lot of storms coming down. Draw is showing impeccable play right now. What did he do? Just eat Jungbi and like consume his spirit? Because he is doing a great job. Meanwhile, Q2, he's... Uh, He's made some a few blunders, but the fact that he has defended well um, at that one point in the game where draw was pushing across at the 15 minute mark is just incredible too. So nice back and forth, both players showing that they're really strong here. We see that lurkers are just the primary choice um, in this matchup for Q2, and he wants to punish uh, draw for uh, draw if he can't deal with the lurkers effectively. Meanwhile, we've seen that the storms have been way too good here, but Dark Templar play. So this is going to be a, a, a curious um, play indeed for draw. Is he going to be able to sneak these guys in and get the damage off that we want to see from those kind of units and that investment here? Because with the massive amount of overlords, I don't think that... Um, I don't think that observation will be a huge issue. Detection is not going to be lacking for Q2. But look at that. He is lifting um, a lot into his overlord. And this is not going to get scouted. I see that he's going to be going directly for the six. Oh, excuse me, guys. Uh, like I said, it's 12.30 now a in the AM. And every once in a while, you just have to let out a little bit of yawn. Um, but I am way more than excited for this game, so do not think I'm tired. Um, these cannons, are they going to go down quickly, though? This is something where you want to see the Defiler drop out and go for a Dark Swarm tech. But when we're looking here, we do have the Hive tech done. The uh, Defiler is uh, researching consume at the same time, so we can eat up its little Zergling units and get energy. And it, it looks like a lot of the cannons go down, but this is a good defense by Draw. He had just enough cannons, so that way he could react and bring his army back in time. So let's just do a little bit of recap of what's inside of his base. It looks like he did over prepare for that drop, but he was able to catch it off on uh, catch the drop off guard. So he didn't really have to worry about it too much. Keeping those cannons up is not bad play. A lot of gateways inside of his main base, and he is going for additional upgrades. And if we look at it, he's already got the plus three attack uh, and one one on his armor. He'll have plus two plasma on the way. Meanwhile, two plus two carapace. And then on the attack, we have plus one attack. So the upgrades are heavily in Draw's favor. He's done such a good job of keeping that in check. And meanwhile, a lot of cannons at each of his bases. And so this is just going to be a really heavy gateway aggression, which is pretty standard for Draw, uh, or not Draw, for Protoss in general in the PvZ matchup, is to just rely on those gateway units to do the damage they need. Uh, not too much uh, more Stargate play is going to be required. Um, maybe a steady set of Corsairs at some point in the game if you want to keep that up. But once you have a good amount of Dragoons and, and Archons and High Templars, you really, the Corsairs aren't, aren't needed in that large number. So this is what I was saying earlier. Drop that uh, Defiler off and go for two Dark Swarms. And then you can take things out so quickly here. And what I learned from a game that I was watching earlier, um, I think I was casting a game with Minazur, is that under Dark Swarm, the uh, the direct attack damage from the Archon does not do any damage under Dark Swarm. Only the AOE swipe damage from the Archon will actually damage units. Uh, so that's something a little bit cool and factual that I, I actually wasn't aware of. Dark Swarm is a very intricate ability. So a huge engagement here though. These uh, storms are going to have to be uh, very near perfect for draw. And it looks like they did a pretty good job here. The Lurkers are slow low on damage, but draw's army getting forced back. He's at 133 supply due to uh, against 83 supply. And um, 
I think that that just it, that makes it even. You would think that with such a disparity in the um, in the food count, but the fact that Zerg can macro up so easily here, what we want to look at is there is no more mining at the main base here. So he and he's about to run out of mining at his natural. So basically, he's on a three base economy uh, against one, two, three of the Protoss player. But this uh, additional third base of draw is actually running really low on minerals too. So this is looking like a map where we can we can see the the players mine each other out. And this non-stop aggression means that they're going to have to continue to use all the funds available to rebuild their armies as much as possible. Neither player is letting go and allowing um, allowing maxed out armies to uh, to engage each other. So this base is so crucial for draw. He's got to make sure he holds onto it. But Dark Storm being so used very well. Q2 is an incredible player playing for the uh, clan Pain. If you guys are not aware, Pain did a pretty good job in Gambit's Cup for um, not being one of the um, you know top tier teams or having having the best players um, on their team. They are still a pretty decent clan, and um, they put up good fights um, in all the team leagues that they participate in. So um, I'm very impressed with pain, with Q2 pain right now. Meanwhile, Elgin Page, aka Draw, if you're just coming in here, it, he's he's been playing so well until this point where he lost um, his Nexus, and it looks like a nice stack of observers here. Obviously, he doesn't want to end up losing the lurkers because he lost his observers. Continuing to to um, pump Corsairs out. I wonder what he's thinking. Um, the Corsairs are really needed for at this point in the game. A huge engagement here with the Lurkers, and there's a nice uh, lack of storms, so Q2 can continue to push this aggression here and use Dark Swarm and Lurkers to engage even further. And it looks like he's going to be pushing Draw back and maybe be able to take this base back. Draw, he really, really, really needs to get, get this base. Only this heavy mining base is uh, is left available to him. Not much mining really here. And uh, I would be curious to see how many probes that Draw may have tried to kill off. Um, or he's just holding inside of this uh, additional mining base here. Uh, because obviously you want to trade that for supply at some point in the game if you know you can't use them for mining anymore. So the Zerglings are moving in with these workers, trying to maintain that constant aggression. This is really what I was saying. This is taking a page out of Killer's book where you try to engage with those Zerglings first, to follow with the lurkers, and try and bait up the storms right away. And a plague coming down, that's really huge. Because he didn't plague the Archons, he plagued the Dragoons, which are much more important um, units as far as health-wise goes. And um, they will die to just a couple of hits from these Cracklings that could engage here. So plus three care place, uh, care pace plus two attack. Meanwhile, we're looking at one, two, 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 three upgrades now. The final, uh, the second armor upgrade, finally fishing for the Protoss player. But it seems like Zerg is working towards getting those uh, upgrades back in the swing favor of the of Q2. So now he does have another set of links here. Um, no other units available with them though, and he will not be able to engage with those right away because these Archons are just going to be way too brutal. So now we're seeing that Q2 is ready to move out again. 106 supply now to 124. It looks like Zerg might be winning this game at this point with the macro having the larger army here. It's going to come down to Storms to just try and dwindle things down a little bit more here. Um, and here's some tricky play that uh, uh, that Q2 might want to look into is trying to uh, Observer Snipe with Scourge. It's definitely something that he could do. But if you look on the map right now, the Zerg player never built a Spire. So we're looking a Spireless um, tech for the uh, for the Zerg player, and he got away with it. So that that's uh, that's pretty interesting. He realized that he can just defend with his Hydralisk, especially with if you guys remember the opening of this game where another Nexus picked off. Oh, that's got to be frustrating for Draw. Anyway, at the beginning of the game, the gas was really delayed. This course came out so late that he was allowed to get his uh, four or five hatch um, Hydras um, producing. And by that time, the Corsairs really couldn't do the damage that they that they would have if a spire wasn't built. 
So it looks like a re-macro again by the Zerg player. 128 supply to 139. And I think that this uh, could be a final engagement coming in here if the Zerg player Q2 can come in and play strong. Um, meanwhile, draw, he's got a nice build up for now. 500 mil on stranded gas. You know, he's not completely out uh, starved. And it looks like a similar equation here, just a little bit more gas for a Zerg player at this time. But that makes sense because this is um, uh, empty, uh, an empty investment geyser right now. Um, just waiting for an assimilator to draw a mine from it. But until then, he's going to have to deal with the depleted assimilators that he does have. Um, and he has two depleted assimilators, a non-gas base here. And then the third one is getting really low. Only 2,000 gas left available. And once that happens, once he runs out of that gas, I think that draw is going to be put in a pretty poor position here. He won't be able to get those really important units um, like High Templar to come out and, and, uh, and use Storm against Q2. But look at that. He, he, the Corsair building is actually paying off. And, you know, maybe not having that Spire will be something that's beneficial to draw. If he can get a high enough Corsair count and start doing, like, some major harassment here. I think that um, draw maybe um, may not have realized that the Spire was never built. Um, but these observers are getting picked off pretty easily here. Or the uh, overlords got picked up pretty easily here. Lurker's trying to engage, but uh, draw doing a really good job of keeping these, uh, of maintaining this hold in the area of the map here. And just uh, Q2 was not able to bust through, even though he used Dark Storm and Lurkers at this time. All, all, all the cannons are getting taken out again. I feel like this is just, you know, the same scenario we're seeing non-stop. These drops are just threatening so bad. Um, I did not realize how hard it was to hold this base as a Protoss player um, and PVZ. So this is a this is something that I would like to see uh, top players like like draw and some and um, and uh, Dragon and a couple other Protoss players maybe discuss uh, what is the best strategy for holding this space besides just building tons of cannons and praying to God that you can you can deal with the drops as they move in. Um, definitely difficult play here. And we do see that more defilers are coming out. This is the advantage of having that additional extractor here. And Draw's got to be really missing it at this point here. So now we're seeing that he's down to 87 gas, of 1400 gas left at his assimilator, and he's about to run dry on minerals. He maybe has about a thousand minerals left um, between that base. So where are these players going to attack next? Obviously, Q2 realizes if he can contain, if he can maintain the constant aggression here, if he takes this base one more time, this could be the end of the game. So draw, he's gonna have to go for a huge defense here, and Q2 trying to move in, but tons of storms taking out these lurkers, and they're gonna die almost immediately here. But did you see the double kill on the Archon and a Dragoon going down? A hero lurker getting four kills. That's just incredible. And we see Q2 trying to do the best he can. Get that Defiler as much energy as possible. Sitting at 200 now. He can come in here and do another Dark Swarm if he wants to. Maybe drop a Plague. And that's what he does. He goes for the Plague. And now he's going to just dwindle down the health on top of those Dragoons. And if we look at the health, you know, there's only 40 health on the on High Templars. But they need to stay alive so that way they can use their storm. They're gonna get picked off. Uh, Draw should have morphed an Archon. It's too late now. Hindsight is not something that helps you in Brood War. That game, or uh, that unit, those units are gone and he can't bring them back. Zerglings moving in now, trying to bait some units out and do some heavy damage here. These Dark Templar, they have practically no health now, especially with the Plague. It's gonna um, take them down slow, so low here. And um, <laughs> now we see that the Plague on the Nexus. It's going to bring the Nexus down to really low health, and it can easily be sniped off. And that's something that he might consider here. If he goes in for a drop from both angles, then he might be able to get some Zerglings in and snipe off this uh, Nexus. I think it... Does it take two plagues to get the Nexus down to one health? I cannot recall, and that is not an Arbiter joke. So we do see that there is still mining here with these minerals, but that is running low too. And additional uh, set of mineral patches here, but Zerg is running low too. Draw has to go for a hold. If he can hold this area, he might actually win the economic war. And as the units try and stream in here, he goes for more storms. Storms will be able to go through the dark swarm. He cannot see anything. 
And I think that's what was intended for Q2 is to just put as many Dark Swarms as possible. So you cannot see the units as they try and run in here. The health on the Nexus is so low, it's sitting at 202. And the shields are going to be all that remains if more damage comes out here. And Lurkers are getting inside. There's so many Hydras and Lurkers under here. They can draw the Fen. He's got to bring some more High Templar across. It looks like he's coming in from the back though. The Dark Templars are trying to run their way in. And the Observers, where is the Overlord here? Oh, but the Nexus does fall. Meanwhile, he only has 300, 400 minerals now. He's got to hold on to that. He cannot remake units. He's got to save for the Nexus. And I think that's what he's going to do. But a lot of the probes are gone now. This is it. This is the rest of the pros for draw. Meanwhile, Q2, he's got the advantage. He knows that he has draw on his back foot. There is no more economy here. And he has to engage and continue this pressure. Uh, picking off another important High Templar here. Just a set of Dragoons and Dark, uh, and Dark Templar are left on the map. Zerglings moving in again. These cheap and expensive Cracklings are doing the damage that they can. And uh, I think that Draw is in a really tough situation here. Sitting on 500 minerals, he's going to have to get another probe down here. Is he going to be able to do that? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. But draw, please, you gotta send a probe up here. Meanwhile, Q2 doing so well, an incredible Zerg player uh, coming up through the scene. We can tell that that he is pushing a, a, a top Protoss foreigner to the limit here. And now we do see that draw bringing that probe here and is going to be building this Nexus. We're 34 minutes into this game and it, it looks like all these Cracklings are just thirsty for blood. They are going to go Vampire on top of this Protoss army. And uh, <laughs> there's no Dark Swarm though. And he, this is the, this is a huge movement here. He's going to engage with Arthur Dark Swarm. What, look at the amount of gas that he has, but he doesn't have that many minerals left. And he's got to be very intelligent about how he's going to spend his resources. Meanwhile, draw if he gets this Nexus up, the game could completely turn around again. He, he, it's just so important that he holds the space. The six o'clock is uh, is like the Alamo of the Protoss spaces right now. And um, if you don't know what the Alamo is, I guess that's a North American reference or United States reference and uh, <laughs> just uh, Wikipedia or something. And, and it looks like Draw is able to hold out again, just barely surviving with 58 um, it's supply, 244. But we see a lot of these uh, defilers are just kind of lost here. Does Q2 know what he's doing? Um, I guess maybe he's waiting for them to get the appropriate energy so he can use them again. But that's allowing Draw to get his Nexus up. If Q2 wants to win this game, he's going to have to figure out how to get this Nexus down again. And here comes the mining. All the probes are, are moved again. Meanwhile, we have a depleted simulator. And I'm thinking that maybe gas is not as important as getting this mineral count high. And he might want to move these guys to start mining. And that's incredible. Okay, so as I say that, he takes the probes off. I swear I haven't watched this replay beforehand. But yeah, he takes the pros off and brings them to the mineral base. But he can actually use them for the simulator here. Much more effective to mine that eight gas at a time rather than um, the two that you get from depleted um, mining on the Vespin Geyser. And so now he brings them in. Another plague though. And these units are going to be really low again on health. And lurkers are going to be very difficult to um, use. Since you just have so few units, you can concentrate on those lurkers and know where they are and try and put them in scenarios where they're not as effective. And so that's going to make it harder for him to break here. I think that the uh, unit composition for, for draw is just better at this time. And he may have done it. After losing this Nexus five, six times at most, he may have just barely hung on here. And Q2 has got to be really upset with himself that he was not able to capitalize on all the damage that he did on top of this base. And this might end up being game. Um, I mean, a great job by both players. But I just think that draw, he's got too much economy now. He can, he, it's not like... He, he can't macro once he gets the amount of resources up here, even though you can't really macro off one base economy too well. Um, and this is going to be the final engagement here. If Q2 can make it in and take this down, draw will fall, but being so smart, putting out those pylons there. And these lurkers are trying to pick out the pylons, but the storms are going to be in range. This is really tough for Q2. He knows that that he needs something, you know, more dire. 
maybe if he waited for if, if the defiler energy was more available to him he would have been able to take this in better losing a few careless zerglings here too and look at the lurkers trying to move in a little bit more and maybe they can actually hit this next uh, this gateway here and it looks like they can so the gateway will eventually fall but storms they're just continuing to come here and it looks like we're gonna have another storm very shortly here about another 10 seconds and then a couple storms available on this high cut block and look at that moving the overlords in maybe he just needed to move everything in at once including his drones um because that's the end of the game and q2 is calling gg an incredible play by draw i cannot believe that he was able to overcome this um just incredible play and uh, that's a little bit of a sample of what is to come in the Icy Cup Ladder Tournament event. So if you guys are ready for December 7th, that's going to be my birthday. I am your uh, caster, BC Dagger. It will be me along with uh, Pauline, a.k.a. Maurice, a.k.a. Maurice Payne, a.k.a. Draw, and oh, not a.k.a. And then also Draw Casting, um, a.k.a. Ellen Page on Icy Cup. So, um... Thank you guys. Our casters are the Swedish Brood War Initiative, Glenso.eu, Global Insurance Solutions, Insurance Brokers. And then we have, of course, our main host of this event, IC Cup. And so thank you all to all three of you guys, to all um, additional sponsors, Rets, Plublum, Surf, uh, Dash VI, um, and Defiler.ru. And I think is... Oh, okay, that's a partner. Okay, so thank you bo to both of those guys for um, for being part of this great event. And we will see you December 7th and December 14th as we go through all three phases of the IC Cup ladder event. Um, this is BC Dagger again. Thank you so much for watching this with me. And I hope you guys all have a great day following this, uh, following this cast. Uh, so take care and uh, goodbye.